I've always been curious if baking a 3D pen creation in an oven would smooth it well. But it wasn't until I was playing around with recycling my 3D pen waste by baking it and getting terrific results that I knew I had to try it out. I already had a way of testing out different smoothing methods from my how to smooth 3D pen creations video. I decided to use that method to continue my experiments with baking filament and see where the results took me. This video shows a number of baking tests involving different infills and surface preparations. Once I found the one infill that worked the best, I did more detailed testing around that. I followed the guidelines I set out in my previous video on smoothing, namely that I only use PLA and the results only apply to that type of filament. I also want to stress again how much I hate sanding and do almost none of that in this video. This is definitely a continuation of my quest for the fastest and easiest method to smooth 3D pen creations. My starting point was coating these quarter sphere styrofoam balls with a single 3D pen layer of the same black filament. Here you get a look at just how rough raw 3D pen layer lines are. This is the same procedure I used in my previous 3D pen smoothing video, so it allows for comparison with those results, which is very useful. Let's now get to baking some filament. Here's a time lapse of the first test of a single 3D pen layer on the styrofoam quarter sphere. I did a few quick tests prior to this and settled on the baking time and temperature shown. I tried to keep those the same throughout all my tests. Do you believe in magic? Wow, I was really encouraged when I saw this. It's by no means perfect, but the surface is so shiny and smooth in most places. The shape sagged somewhat, and there are some small pits, but otherwise it looks pretty dang good. And that's from simply popping in the oven for five and a half minutes and letting it go. Compare that with all the time and effort required for wood burning and sanding, which is shown here. Turns out the styrofoam had completely melted away, and that was probably why the overall shape sagged during baking. I decided to find out what 3D pen techniques would work with baking. For completeness, I decided to try a thin, unsupported mesh structure. I was pretty sure I knew how this would end up, but I wanted to show it for educational purposes. And go time lapse. Yep, just what I thought, a puddle. But it was a pretty cool time lapse, right? Next, I moved on to testing a single unsupported layer, meaning there's no infill at all. I was a little less certain on how this one would turn out. I thought the additional structure had a little more chance of holding up, but no, we got another puddle. Okay, well what happens then if I fill the quarter sphere with as much plastic as I can? This is the equivalent of maximum plastic infill. Yeah, it's not a solid block of plastic, but it's as close as I can get. So we have the same rough surface on the outside, but it's way more solid. Wait, wait, no, oh boy. It was at this point that I realized that infill was gonna play a huge role in making this work. I decided to start experimenting with different types. The first type I tried was using polymer clay. I knew that you could get a very smooth surface using clay and that the structure would survive baking. So I thought this was a great candidate. I didn't make it exactly the same size, but thought it was close enough for testing. Here's the clay base after being baked by itself in the oven. After the clay base was baked, I added a single layer of the same black filament, just like the other tests. All right, what's your confidence level? Is this thing gonna collapse? I thought not, but have been shaken by the earlier tests. Hmm, well it didn't collapse, but I'd say it doesn't look quite as good as the earlier styrofoam test. It's got these wrinkles and some bubbles and the shape started oozing. I mean, the surface is definitely smooth when compared to raw 3D penning, but I wanted to keep experimenting. One 3D pen technique that I've become very taken with is using foil covered in blue painter's tape as the infill. So I set out to make a quarter sphere made out of foil, which is harder than it sounds. Then simply add the filament as before and get ready to bake it. I have to say at this point, 
I really had no idea what to expect. Wow, I guess believing in magic does help. This is the best result yet. The surface is really shiny and smooth, and the overall shape stayed really stable. The one downside is the surface really follows the shape of the foil, so it has some indents. When you compare this to my old test, it looks really good. And here's a comparison shot of the surviving test so far. All right, I've been throwing a lot of results at you, so let's do a recap of where we are so far. This is what's come out of the oven for all those tests. In my opinion, the foil infill looks the best by far. So from here on in the video, I'm gonna try a few more experiments only using foil infill. The first combo I tried with foil was wood burning the surface before baking. My thought was that this would get rid of the indentations and provide a more uniform surface. Let's see what the time lapse shows. See this area that's sagging? I specifically added more filament here to try to get the shape of the foil more like a sphere. This is an interesting result that comes back later, so remember it. I think this looks really similar to the first foil test we did, so it might not be worth the extra effort. For the next test, I took a previously baked quarter sphere and covered it with a second layer of filament. My hope with this was that the second layer would self-level over the very smooth first layer and get rid of any imperfections. But the actual result was just hilarious. The second layer just oozed right off and made it look more like a hat. Remember the other extra filament I added that caused sagging? Yeah, any second layer is just gonna melt right off. Okay, final test, I promise. Even though I hate sanding, I couldn't resist seeing what happens if you sand a previously baked surface. Whoa, that's cool. The surface recovered its nice shiny appearance, but there are a whole bunch of pits. I think I need to keep sanding with progressively finer grits to give this a chance of working. Now that all the foil tests are complete, I'll show you some views so we can try to figure out which ones work the best. To me, the two that stand out are the foil by itself and the foil with wood burning. And when comparing it to the old test I did, you can see how much shinier and smoother the surface is. The only downside is that the surface isn't quite as uniform and there are a few more indents. When you look at foil only versus foil and wood burning, I'd say they look really similar and that it's not worth the extra effort of wood burning. Those are all the results, and I'll summarize my thinking on this whole process near the end of the video. A few words about safety. I've seen others use their main kitchen oven or toaster oven to melt plastic in. I personally didn't feel comfortable doing this in something that my family and I cook food in. If you want to try this, I definitely recommend getting a dedicated toaster oven so that you don't have to worry about mixing plastic and food. This does generate some smoke and a plasticky smell, so be sure to do this in a well-ventilated area. As with most things on my channel, be sure to use the proper safety precautions and protective gear. Be safe, people. So is it easy? Well, like most things, the answer is not a simple yes or no. This method is super easy in that all you need to do is pop it into the oven for around six minutes and you can get a super smooth and glossy result. That's way faster and way less work than any other method I've looked at so far. However, this method is not for use with every 3D bend technique. Structures of only PLA will just melt into a puddle. But if you use the right type of infill, which I found to be foil and painter's tape, it can work really well with the right geometry. I was also excited to see that since this gets the surface so smooth, it would work well with traditional priming and painting methods. I can also imagine using this method as an initial quick smooth before doing any number of other smoothing methods like wood burning or sanding. Imagine how much time I could have saved on the Grinch if I had initially smoothed it in an oven. I'd say my quest to minimize sanding just got a very helpful ally. Be sure to check out my other video on how to smooth 3D pen creations. Or if you're interested in learning how to use a 3D pen, check out this tutorial's playlist, which covers all skill levels. Finally, don't forget to subscribe for more 3D pen content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.